Welcome to my keynote. I'm Kai Streeck. I'm working for Blumer Lehmann, and we had the chance to build the Cambridge Mosque. Uh, we are a woodworking company in Gosau, Switzerland, with a very old tradition of 145 years of woodworking. So I will talk about four subjects. I will talk about the geometric concept and how and what was the challenge to make it buildable in wood. Then I will talk about a very special situation that we don't have straight wood, but we have bent wood and we have doubly bent wood and the challenges we have doing this. I will then switch over to the production and in the end I will talk a little bit about the challenges and logistics we had in this project. We are here in Goso and we are here in front of a mock-up. The mock-up is uh, a very important thing we, we are doing and this is for us um, one moment in a project where we are really testing the geometry, we are testing the possibilities doing it in wood, the construction, the assembly, everything is tested on the mock-up. And this is for us one principal, very important thing for a successful project. So we'll start with the um, geometry. This is just a reminder, I guess this you had in the keynote from Julia Barfield about the geometrical concept. So we don't have something which has been planned especially for wood, but it's really an architectural gesture which is translated then in wood, and it's translated in a way that it's really makeable in wood. So I just want to show you different kinds of tree types we have been built in the company. This is the Cambridge Mosque, but we have also been built different tree types um, with different geometrical orders of assembly, like this one is something where all the assembly is done in a vertical way. And the Cambridge Mosque is a different situation where the assembly is done normal to the master surface. And this is the most complex thing we can do in wood. So from the geometrical concept, we got the grid pattern and we have a master surface. And the first step was projecting this grid, uh, grid pattern into the master surface, which we can see here. And from that, we extruded the segments. And we had, the, um, with the um, statical analysis, we were able to um, define the width and the height of these segments. What we don't have here is the segmentation. Um, with this, we are getting a kind of um, um, system to build the complete mosque. So from the geometrical concept, I want to go on the um, bending of wood. We don't have straight segments but we have curved segments. And the problem in wood is that you always have to follow the fiber of the wood. This is a diagram showing the compression strengths and the tension strengths of um, wood depending on the fiber angle um, you're using. Like if you have a piece of wood and you're following the fiber angles like here, you have a very strong um, situation in tension and compression. If you take the forces in um, 90 degrees to this, you nearly have no, no strength in compression and, st um, and tension. So when we have a curved surface, what we need is we have to bend the wood so that the wood is following the structure and the fiber is following the, the structure of the project. So we could, we could take straight wood, we could take singly curved wood, and we can take doubly curved wood. And in this project, because we have a doubly curved structure, we needed to have doubly curved wood. And here you see one very important parameter, which is defining how you can take a lamella and how you can bend a lamella for singly or doubly curved wood. So you can imagine a very thin lamella, which you can bend. If you have a thick lamella, you cannot bend it so much. So the ratio of bending to the thickness of the lamella is one to 200. You can imagine, a radius of two meters will need a lamella of one centimeter. And um, if, if, you, if you have a stronger curvature, you need thinner lamellas. And this becomes very fast, very expensive. You can see it in this diagram. When we work with straight wood, we have a price X. Singly curved is double, uh, two times more expensive to five times more expensive. And doubly curved wood is three times to 15 times more expensive. And this 15 times um, comes when you have very, very thin lamellas. And um, the doubly curved wood, I want to show it here on um, two samples. So one is a raw material, 
a blank which we are ordering. Here you can see that the curvature in this part is very strong and this is defining the thickness of the lamella. Another problem we have here is that um, this is like pressed, glued and then pressed, and the press is not a curved press, but it's pressed in segments of about 30 centimeters. So you don't really see it on this one because it's quite good, but normally you have a slightly polygonal situation. And when then you come and you're cutting out the piece out of the wood, you can see it here, when you have very thin lamellas, it's very difficult to control to stay inside of a lamella. And in thin lamellas, you might have these things. This is the moment where you're jumping from lam one lamella into another one. And um, so if, if you're working from an architectural concept, it, it's good to use the bending of the wood, but it's good to try to work in areas where we are working with um, radiuses about eight meters, because then we can use lamellas of 40 millimeters, and this is the most economical way of uh, producing the wood. So what we have done here, um, compared to the geometry before, is here we really worked on the segmentation. So a very important thing is the, the um, assembly, the possibility to assemble these things. I said it's not vertically assembled, but normal to the surface, so these knots become very complex. And the second thing is we have parts with a strong curvature, where we have thin lamellas, very expensive wood, and we have a trunk with big radiuses where we can work with 40 millimeter lamellas. And this is, um, I think, one of the key points to make this object feasible and not too expensive and, and optimize the object without changing the architecture. Before we are talking about the logistics, let's look at the five axis milling machine we have been used to produce Cambridge Mosque. This is the five axis machine we have used to produce the Cambridge Mosque. Uh, this is a tool we have used uh, producing it. So in these tools, we have two sides. We have a flat side here and a side here. And these are the two sides we're using for cutting. Um, the geometry we are producing is a doubly curved ge geometry, but finally the surfaces we are milling are ruled surfaces. So we always try to have a tool which is or milling the surface like this, or which is milling the surface by the side. And now we are going inside of the machine to show the different aggregates we have inside of the machine. Here we are inside of the machine. You can see one of these tools. We have like three aggregates, one on this side, one on the other side, and then we have a third aggregate on the bottom. And having two aggregates on the top is very useful because a lot of pieces in Cambridge, we produce 2,746 pieces, and a lot of them are identical. And here we can use one aggregate to produce one piece and have the same NC code at the same time producing the second part with the second aggregate. The third aggregate has a very big advantage because we can clamp the wood and without loosening the wood, we can produce from all six sides. And this allows us to produce parts with a very, very high um, amount of precision. One very particular situation of wood project is that you always work with pre-assembly and prefabrication. This has already been done for hundreds of years in wood structures. And we also do it nowadays. There's one very particular situation. I was talking about the whole the 3D modeling we're doing for the project. We also do a 3D modeling of the logistics because we are sending about 60 to 80 trucks to um, England and we are planning every single truck so that the pieces can fit on the truck and that we can put a maximum amount of objects to reduce the amount of trucks we need for this project. So we do pre-assembly first in Switzerland as much as possible, but parts which become too big, we have to assemble them on site. We do this on a roof so that we are always sure that the wood stays in dry conditions during the whole process and that we are never getting wet wood on the project. Here you see the trunk, which has been pre-assembled. It's placed on site and then afterwards the crown is coming on the project. When you look at projects from Fayotto, there was a very different uh, approach of using the wood. There were very often flexible structures, thin pieces of wood, and you would place the wood in, in, in shape. 
Here we work differently. He work uh, with very stiff parts. So this part is not flexible at all. And we need a precision of less than two millimeters from one corner to another to be sure that in the end, everything fits together. Here you can see how the crown has been placed into the trunks. And this is the last image I would like to close my presentation from the inside of the mosque. And for me, this is one of the most amazing projects I've done in my career. And I find it absolutely amazing because it's a stunning architecture, but it's using wood in a very elegant way. And we are really trying to take the advantages of the fiber of the wood. And you see here something which is not ornamentation, but it's structure. And you see a very elegant and very thin uh, um, structure, which you can build nowadays in wood. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation.